makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. One puff won't tell you. One sniff won't tell you. It takes day in, day out smoking to find out how mild a cigarette is, how well it agrees with your throat. Make the sensible cigarette test, the 30-day camel mildness test, and see just how mild a cigarette can be. Yes, and you'll find out why more people smoke camels than any other cigarette. Here transcribed is Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, the Milton Burl of Homicide. Pretty bad. Oh, hi, Helen. What are you doing? Playing canasta. Who's there? Well, just me and that Japanese beetle I found hiding in my bills. Japanese beetle? Yeah. And you're playing canasta? Well, what do you expect us to do? I'm tired. He just finished giving me my judo lesson. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't think you believe me. Oh, sure I do. Who's winning? I am. He can't speak English. Besides, I make up the rules. Mm Mm-hmm. Am I going to see you tonight? Well, I... You what? I don't know. Something just came into my office. Client? I don't know. Here comes another one. One what? Beats me, but they're pretty strange. Hey, uh, where'd you leave your saucer, fellas? Maybe they're shills for the beetle. I'll call you back. Bye. Bye. Well, uh, what can I do for it? Hey, wait a minute. I don't want I should break his jaw by accident. Ah, oh, such a nice man. You are so considerate. And I would be happy to hold your nooks for yourself, though. Diamond. Diamond. He is very out. Well, here, Salvador, try this pitcher of water. Uh, wait, I'll remove the gladiolus. I felt as if I was lying in the middle of a crowded sink and someone had piled all the dishes on my head. They turned on the faucet and I floated up with a dirty coffee cup and took a look around. I treaded water and squinted through my dewy eyelids at two of the ugliest dishwashers I had ever seen. Look! He's twitching. Mm, oh. <laughs> you see, Salvador, is just a little lazy. How do you feel, Diamond? Oh. Let us know when things start making sense. Oh, oh, not, uh, what's going on? What happened? He's confused. Yeah. Uh. I think maybe you sapped him too hard. Oh. Yuki, I take that as an insult. You know how careful I am. I apologize, Salvador. Thank you. I... Hey, uh, how, how'd you monkeys get in here anyway? Well, it sounds like he's collected most of his marbles. <laughs> Looks like a complete recovery, Yuki. I want to know what this is all about. Oblige the man, Salvador. Sure. But keep him with us. <laughs> Naturally. Hey, right, now, wait a minute. Oh. That's enough, Salvador. That's enough. <laughs> Can you hear me, Diamond? Eh, it's going to be obstinate. I don't think he likes it. Belt him across the ears. He'll listen. Mm. Can you hear me now, Diamond? He's nodding his head. I guess he don't want to open his mouth and let the blood out. Oh, that's fine. 
Now, listen, Diamond. In a while, you'll get a call from a Mr. Wharton. Oh. He'll offer you a job, but you will not take it. Do you understand? <laughs> Salvador, please, see if he understands. <laughs> he says, yeah, he <laughs> understands. But now he's got a sore arm. Uh, remember, Mr. Wharton, you don't want to work for him. I think he understands, Yuki. Yeah. But he looks tired from the strain. He certainly does. Look at those dark circles under his eyes. Well, put the man asleep, Salvador. Certainly. Night. <laughs> Mr. Diamond? Mr. Diamond, can you hear me, Mr. Diamond? Oh, 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 this can get monotonous. Go away, will you? Should I call the police, Mr. Diamond? What? Oh, oh I was expecting uglier company. Can you sit up? Oh, I'll take a crack at it. <clears throat> oh, I, uh, I'll bet your name's Wharton. Why, oh, that's right. How did you know? Get out of here. Well, I want to talk to you. Well, I just had one long conversation. It was too one-sided. Now, go on. My health is doubtful, but it's fun to have it around for company. Maybe $500 would pick you up. It might for a while, but I don't like to waste that kind of money on funerals. $750. Yeah, so they line the coffin with velvet. A thousand. Well, you're beginning to make a short life sound practical. If you do the job successfully, there will be another thousand. You just bought yourself a corpse. Let me wash up. Uh, talk some more. I, I can hear you. Well, it's my son, Roger. He thinks he killed a man. He, he thinks? What do you want me to do? Find out for sure so he can brag about it? Ever heard of a John Alter? <laughs> oh, sure. Walt Levinson sent him up five years ago on a manslaughter rap. Well, he doesn't like it up there, and he'd like to get out. I don't blame him. What's this got to do with your son? I'm chairman of the parole board. Yeah, you look much better now, Mr. Diamond. So you're chairman of the parole board? Yes. Some of Alter's friends promised to keep quiet about my son if I let Alter go free when he comes up before the board next week. Uh huh. And you think maybe your son was framed? Yes. About a month ago, he met a girl in Florida. Her name is Lenore Brown, and she's a friend of Alter's. When Roger went to pick up the Lenore girl at her apartment, he found her struggling with some man. Mm, that happens. It looked like he was trying to kill her. There was a gun on the floor, and she called to Roger for help. He picked up the gun and shot the man. She told Roger he'd killed him and that he must get out. When we went back, they were both gone. About a month later, some of Alter's friends got in touch with me. They forget about the killing if you let Alter out of Sing Sing, huh? That's right. Mm. Well, I don't remember reading anything about it in the papers. You're the first one outside of Alter and his friends who knows anything about it. You see, they say they're hiding the corpus delecti, so there was no report of the murder. Now you think maybe they staged the killing, put blanks in the gun, and after your son beat it, the dead man walked out under his own steam? Well, that's what I want you to find out. Uh-huh. The man your son thought he killed, uh, what did he look like? Dark man with a scar from his nose to his chin. Mm -hmm. If my son is innocent, I want you to bring the parties responsible to justice. Amen. Well, here's a check for $1,000. Thank you. If you find the girl and prove my son innocent, there'll be another 1000 in your pocket. Well, I'll sew up the holes. Thanks, Mr. Warden. I'll start right away. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. You can reach me at the Wentworth Hotel. I'm staying there until this matter gets cleared up. Well, I won't get in touch with you unless I find something. The guys who worked me over are pretty set in their ways, and there's no sense in you tripping over a lot of dead bodies. <laughs> I grabbed a pack of camels, looked at the thousand-dollar check, thought about the warning the two bruise artists had given me, and decided it was a toss-up. If I spent the thousand like I knew I would, I'd wish it was dead anyway. So I left the building, grabbed a cab for the fifth precinct. Ten minutes later, I walked into the squad room and spotted Sergeant Otis, looking like an advertisement for a sour stomach. Well, Richard Diamond, Private Sloot. Well, Sergeant Otis, Private Sloth. Huh? Well, look it up. S-L-O-T-H. I will. Under S. I know. The three-toed variety. And get your uniform press, won't you? Looks like you've been hanging it in a taffy machine. Oh. Well, hello, Rick. I... 
Hey, you must get tired changing your face every day. Somebody shove you around again? Uh, I've been catching up on my patty cake. Tell me, Walter, do you ever know a girl named Lenore Brown? Yeah, sure. John Alter's expense account. They used to hold hands before I sent him up. Know where I can find her? Alter's still got her staked out. When he gets out, he's going to come back and dig up the claim. You better forget about it. She's got the antidote for lonely nights, but some of Alta's boys are protecting it. I know, I know. They gave me a pep talk this afternoon. Then listen to them. It's better watching the game from the bench. Oh, uh, you never can tell. I might make a score. Well, you're outweighed, outclassed, and liable to be outlived. But she used to work at the Black Swan in Florida. We heard Alta was trying to get a parole, and she came to New York to be close to him. Any line on her here in town? No, but if she's seeing Alter, you might spot her on a visitor's day. Well, Rick, how are you? It's been a long time. I know a lot of people wouldn't like to hear that, Warden. <laughs> how are you? Oh, fine, fine. What's on your mind? Well, I hear Johnny Alter's been having company. I'd like to take a look at her. Oh, Miss Brown. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't blame you. <laughs> well, I just want to spot her and see where she goes. <laughs> you can't miss. If she walked through the yard, there'd be a jailbreak tomorrow. What time are visiting hours? Well, if she's seeing Alter today, she should be downstairs right now. Like to take a look? Uh-huh. I'll have a guard take you down. Good. Well, well on uh, second thought, I'll go myself. There she is, sitting at the end table, talking to Alder. Hmm. Well, now I know why Alder needs a lot of money. She's wearing enough mink to carpet Radio City. <laughs> you should get a load of her on a warm day. Huh? Well, the coat doesn't stop me. If she'd show up, she was wearing a tent. How long has she got with Alder? Mm, about another five minutes. Warden, you know, uh, maybe I'll let you put me away for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. With something like that to look forward to on Visitor's Day, I might go for the change. <laughs> You'd get tired of just talking. I hung around by the big gray buildings until she came out. She walked over to a long white convertible and got in. I decided to let her buy me a new fuse, so I walked over to the car. Uh, going into town? Oh. Back up three feet and I'll let you know. Oh. Three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your tailor couldn't do all of that. Get in. Visiting? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the warden's an old friend. How many years did you know him? Uh-uh, baby. I've been going home every night all my life. Every night? Well, uh, almost. What do you do with the, uh, almost? It depends. Everybody likes something different. You must get tired thinking up new ideas. Oh, I don't think much. It's more fun being surprised. Hey, what's the idea? Surprise. Oh, yeah. And a nickel-plated one. Look, baby, you don't have to pull a gun. If I'm getting fresh, I'll get out and walk. You'll sit right there, Diamond. Name dropper? Mm-hmm. Expecting company? Mm-hmm. And you've met them before, honey. Well, it's nice. I wouldn't want you to get stuck with the introduction. Hey, uh, those your friends driving up? It should be. Now, you hold real still. They'll only shoot you this time. When a gal's got a gun, you don't stand much of a chance unless she's got her mind on something else. This one did. And when she looked up in the rearview mirror to make sure it was her boys, I tagged her. My two playmates were just pulling up, and I jumped out of the car. There he is, Yuki! He's Scott Lenore. She's out cold. Well, shoot him, Salvador. Shoot him! Before we continue with Richard Diamond, private detective, here are a few words about smoking enjoyment. More people smoke camels than any other cigarette. Yes, more people smoke camels than any other cigarette. One reason is flavor. 
Camel's costly tobaccos have a rich, full flavor you won't find in any other cigarette. Another reason is mildness, proven mildness. In a coast-to-coast -coast test of hundreds of people who smoked only camels for 30 days, noted throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Make your own camel 30-day test. The sensible, thorough test. Not just a sniff of the tobacco. Not just a puff of smoke. Only by day-in, day-out smoking can you discover how well a cigarette agrees with your throat. Smoke camels for 30 days and see how mild camels are pack after pack, week after week. See why more people smoke camels than any other cigarette. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. And now, back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Dirty clothes! Get him, Salvador! I was running through the trees then, and I could hear Salvador somewhere behind me, falling all over himself. I pulled my gun and thought about waiting for him. But I had another idea. I stopped and listened. He's around here somewhere, Suki. Well, come on, we're spread out, Salvador. They were somewhere behind me, and both of them were looking now. So I cut off to my left and headed back to the highway. The cars were about 100 yards down the road, and I used my last lung getting there. Lenore was still unconscious, so I climbed in the white convertible with the unconscious nylons and drove off. <laughs> I'd been driving for about 15 minutes when I noticed something lying on the seat beside the still sleeping Lenore. It was her purse, and she didn't wake up when I grabbed it. Doing a rummage job at 80 miles an hour isn't easy, but there wasn't much of interest anyway, just a little black book. I needed a gimmick, so I stuck it in my pocket. I put the purse back on the seat just as she started coming around. Well, now that's it, baby. Sit up and look at the scenery. How did you get here? Where's Yuki and Salvador? Playing Peter Pan. Jaw hurt? Yes, you heal. Well, play rough and you get hurt. Where do I take you? My apartment, I guess. I drove her to her place on East 51st and walked her to the door. She looked at me like a fat woman eyeing a French pastry, and her mouth slipped down to her shoelaces when I gave her a peck on the cheek and left her standing with an old front doorknob in her hand. I went back to the office and took out her little black book. There were a lot of names, and some of them I knew. Yuki, and after it, likes his work. And Salvador. And after his name, has own gun. And oh yes, yes, Richard Diamond, too. I never did figure out what the three stars were for, but three other names and addresses put me in second gear. One was in the village, another down by the East River, and the last was somewhere in Chinatown. All of them were a setup for a dead man who wanted to make himself scarce. I wanted to talk with Wharton to, before I started hunting, so I called him at the Wentworth. Did you find out anything yet, Diamond? Uh, not yet. Look, Mr. Wharton, you said the man I was looking for was... Was dark with a scar, hmm? Yes, from his nose to his chin. Oh, well, thanks. Maybe I'll call you tomorrow. I hope you clear this thing up in a hurry. Well, so do I. I want to get my nerves untangled. I took the easy address first, grabbed a cab, and 30 minutes later, I was walking down the steps of a shabby little dive on the east side of Greenwich Village. You want something, Mac? Yeah, a pound of egg noodles. Just sweep them up off the floor. Hey, uh, you know anyone around named Lenore? Sure, Lenore Brown. She comes in here about once a week, listens to the kid at the piano. Now, why would a classy dame like that go out with him? He don't play the piano so good. You ever see a guy with her? man with a scar from his nose to his chin? No, she always does a single. Oh, well, thanks. You've been swell. <laughs> I walked out, got back in the cab, and marked off Greenwich Village in the little black book. The second address, down by the East River. The night was black, and the fog had rolled in, staked out a claim all the way to the Hudson. Oh, 
I stopped Cole, looked down at two gleaming eyes like two pieces of polished glass shining in the glare of the dim street lamp. Steady, boy, steady. Steady. Hold it, Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah, hold it, Lucifer. He won't hurt you, mister, unless I tell him to. Well, think about it for a while, will you? I'm a poor substitute for horse meat. What do you want? Do you know a Lenore Brown? You a cop? Shamus. Beat it, Lucifer. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, pal. I couldn't hold my breath much longer. You can come on up on the porch. You're looking for Lenore Brown, huh? Yeah, you know her? I met her. My wife works for her. Is your wife in? Yeah. Esther, come here. Some private dick wants to talk to you. She's Miss Brown's private maid. Yes? Uh, your husband tells me you work for Miss Brown. Yeah, what's she done? She got many friends. Man friends? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know a man with a scar? Sure, I know lots of them. What are you talking about, woman? I meant someone who Miss Brown knows. What did you mean by that, mister? Look, I really don't know anybody with a scar now. You better beat it. Yeah, get moving. And I want to talk to you, woman. Get in there. Yes, honey. I knew she was going to get bruised, but he looked rough enough to cut my windpipe, and I wanted some place to pour my coffee down in the morning. So I got out of there fast and headed for the last address in the little black book. The place was on one of those narrow, dark streets that looked like the inside of a grave. The sign above the door read Tangy, so I pushed open the door and went in. If I didn't find the man with the scar here, I was out on two strikes. It was a little restaurant on the bottom floor of a two-story building. A quiet waiter slipped up and showed me to a booth. He shoved a menu in my hand and disappeared before I could ask him anything. The place was empty except for an old couple sitting near the door. The waiter said something to them and they looked quickly over at me and then they left in a hurry. The room was completely empty now. Even the waiter had disappeared. I looked up at a flight of stairs at the far end of the room. A pair of very healthy ankles came into view and they were holding up a pair of legs that ran my blood pressure up to 190 again. I eased my gun out and held it under the table. She turned the corner and started down toward my booth like a loose snake in a rabbit pen. Mind if I sit down? Well, it's, uh, it's your party. Shame on you. Don't you know it's not nice to pilfer a lady's handbag? Now Lenore will have to spank. Looks like the last address paid off. If you're buying shrouds, it did. Where's the guy that young Wharton was supposed to have killed? Upstairs. But he's very unsociable. Hates long conversations. I only need a couple of lines. <laughs> he can't even do that. He likes to keep on breathing. The old man figures Alter framed his son. He's not going to let your boyfriend out of Sing Sing until he finds the man with a scar. Think he can do it better than you did? I found him. Was it worth dying for? I don't know. I can tell you better after I talk to him. Mama's going to have to spank sooner than she expected. Come on in, boys. Well, 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 look who's here. Are Mama's two big idiots out collecting blood? Where are your buckets? He's bitter, Yuki. A peasant. <laughs> You've met Yuki and Salvador before, haven't you? Yeah, on the end of a fist. They want to show you the town. I know the beat. Well, I'll bet you've never seen it from the bottom of the East River. No, but if you'll put on a bathing suit, I might buy the idea. It's too bad we'll never make the beach together. I'd like to show you the sights. Boys, you'd better help Mr. Diamond out of the booth. I think he's stuck. You know how it is. Boys like to keep moving. Sure. And so do I. I shot once and caught Yuki in the stomach, and I dumped the table over on Salvador. He grabbed like he was going to waltz with it and went down on his back. I didn't have to get up. I just shot him through the table. Lenore was out of the booth fast and running for the stairs. Look out, Tony! Tony, look out! I caught up with her at the foot of the stairs, and she started up. I saw him standing on the upper landing, scar and all. All meaning gun in his hand. He missed me, but nailed her halfway up. She spun around and fell all over me. 
With both of us down, he was in a good spot to finish the job, but my arm hit the lower post of the staircase and swung me right into line. I just rested my elbow on the banister and let him have it. You should have kept your nose up, mister. A bad landing washes you out. Tell me, did Wharton's son identify the man with the scar? Yeah, he was the one he thought he killed. Mm-hmm. But the old man's feeling pretty good. Yeah, just left. He's happier than Otis on payday. Mm. Who was the guy with the scar? A oh, cheap hood. Record. Name of Lucio. Mm. The girl and Alter had him hidden out in that place so he wouldn't be seen. And I... I, I don't think you're funny, Diamond. Mm, what's the matter, Otis? Yeah, what do you want, meathead? I looked it up. The three-toed variety. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, I uh, called him a sloth. Yeah, a sloth. You should see the picture in the dictionary. It's an animal. Well? It's funny looking with three toes on each foot. Well? And it's noted for its laziness. Okay, Lieutenant. Just forget it. Dick Powell will return in just a minute. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? That question was asked of doctors in every branch of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. Yes, according to this recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Friends, buy your Camels the handy, thrifty way by the carton. That way you always have camels when you want them. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of camels deem it a privilege to send free cigarettes each week to hospitalized servicemen and veterans. This week's camels go to Veterans Hospitals, Topeka, Kansas, and Oakland, California, U.S. Army Percy Jones General Hospital, Battle Creek, Michigan, U.S. Naval Hospital, Portsmouth, Virginia. More than 194 million camels have now been sent to servicemen, servicewomen, and veterans. Now, until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. Tonight's adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell, was written by Blake Edwards. Our director is Helen Mack. Men, for pipe smoking pleasure, get Prince Albert, the national joy smoke. Prince Albert's choice tobacco is rich and flavorsome. It's crimped cut for smooth, even burning, and specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. Yes, P.A. is America's largest selling smoking tobacco. Listen next week for another exciting transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the American Broadcasting Company.